I am here as an absolute last resort. I never wanted to have to talk about this publicly. And for people who care about me, my grandparents, young children in my life, to find out about this story in this way. But as a concerned adult who has experience working in schools with children of all ages, I cannot sit by while my abuser still works at Fenwick High School. He has harmed other people and the school is well aware of his bad actions. I reported it to the police this year and put the school on notice. Here's what happened. I'm gonna start by just reading the email I sent to the principal and president of Fenwick, Peter Groom and Father Petticourt. I mentioned some students in this and I don't have their permission to share their names. So if I redact some information, that's why. I sent this email on December 13th, 2021. Peter Groom, I am the alumni who reported Mr. Quinn to the police recently. For years, I was haunted by what I thought was sexual harassment. After speaking with a lawyer, I was told it was sexual assault. And after filing a police report, the police who spoke to state's attorneys decided it was battery. Luckily for Mr. Quinn, my statute of limitations for battery has expired since this repeatedly happened throughout 2012 and 2014. Otherwise, he could have been arrested and charged. This is what happened. My mom and I met Mr. Quinn when we met with a counselor to introduce me to the school in 2012. Mr. Quinn immediately joked with me about having the same last name, and I saw him as an eccentric old teacher who was just wacky. My religion teacher's classroom was next to Mr. Quinn's for all of junior year and the first half of senior year, and his obsession with stalking me grew. When I was going to my religion class, he'd stop me, wrap his arms around me, put me in almost a headlock, press his cheek, and even his lips against my face and ask me about my love life. He did the same thing over and over again. It had to have happened around 10 times. Two incidents stand out as extra disturbing to me. In March, 2013, I was a member of the Italian club and I was the last student to leave our St. Joseph's table after school event in the school basement. As I left, I saw Mr. Quinn walking down the hallway towards me. We were alone in the hallway and he did the same thing to me. Wrapped his arm around me, put his cheek on mine, and asked about my love life while looking me up and down and making noises that sounded like he was growling. I was terrified and thought something much worse was going to happen. I managed to get away after multiple times trying to pull out of his tight grasp, only to be pulled back in by him. After this, I told my parents and my mom asked if I wanted to report it to the school and I said I didn't know. I had no idea this was illegal and I thought I was overreacting to how bad it made me feel. A couple of days later, Mr. Quinn was no longer at school because he'd been suspended for slapping my classmate across the face. I thought he'd indeed be fired, so I decided I didn't want to deal with it. After a few weeks later, Mr. Quinn returned and the harassment continued. Towards the very end of our senior year, my friend and I signed out of our lunch period to go to the library to get extra studying done for the end of the year, and Mr. Quinn happened to be there. I sat in a table, and I used a computer, so we were separate during the period. While I was on the computer, Mr. Quinn came again and did his usual. It was even more apparent that he was rubbing his lips on my cheek this time. 
As usual, I was frozen and terrified and just went back to work after. But at the end of the period, she came rushing over to me very concerned because she had seen it and asked, did he kiss you? I never told anyone other than my parents about what he had been doing to me. So this was the first time I told a friend. And even years later, she brought it up to me a couple of times because she was so disturbed by its sight. I went to the Oak Park Police Station to give her statement on this. Mr. Quinn is a teacher who does not follow anyone's rules. From the religion class next door, we'd hear him yelling the N-word and Nazi salutes. He's notorious for putting his arm around students. And every year, without a doubt, the students who played Mr. Quinn in the Bonoa talent show did the arm thing. It's his signature move. And it's illegal. I don't know if he ever did it sexually to anyone else, but I'm deeply concerned that he still works there and I want him out of the school. When I was 16, 17, and 18, I didn't anticipate the dangerous effects of what he did to me. But as a 26-year-old woman, I can definitively say that when he did these things to me as a teen, it made me believe that I was inherently bad and promiscuous. It was grooming and it traumatized me. I was sure he'd be fired for his long list of bad behavior without me having to tell this story again and again and be re-traumatized each time. He needs to be fired and I'm committed to seeing that through. So after I sent that email to Fenwick, Peter Groom actually responded in a few days, which I really appreciated, but then a really disappointing investigation unfollowed, which was just immensely triggering to me. First, they had a lawyer reach out to me who they said would conduct an impartial, unbiased investigation. And he was actually an alum of the school who I actually know his kids and my mom knows him. She was concerned saying, I don't think that's really going to be an unbiased investigation because what she knew about him from working at Trinity, where some of his kids also went, was that he provides legal services for these schools that he's helping. He's, he's a fan of the school. And doing an interview where I tell the whole story again after telling it to the police, writing it all out in this email. And at this point, I had spoken with four lawyers where I had to go through the story detail after detail, all followed by sleepless nights nightmares truly this man this disgusting teacher appears in my nightmares all the time because of that terror that was unlocked inside of me and it's still there and it's just incredibly hard for me to have to do all of this I actually told Fenwick, no, I'm not going to work with this lawyer. Um, he was a huge bully when I said that, and um, it confirmed that I made the right decision. Then I found my six lawyers, um, actually seventh, sort of, um, through the, the Time's Up organization, and they gave me the advice that you already put the school on notice. You reported it to the police. You told them everything that happens. That's the most important thing that you can do because when you do it in this way, these things don't just go away. And even though your statute of limitation has expired, they have now been notified that he's a bad actor and if something else happens to someone within their statute of limitations, the school can be in extra, extra trouble 
for knowing that he's bad and not doing anything about it. And those lawyers warned me that sitting for an interview with the school when you already told them the whole story could just be an opportunity for them to harass you more and traumatize you more about this. But I was so committed to seeing this through that I said I would do it. I was willing to put myself in harm's way to have this meeting with an impartial party so that it's fair and go through the re-traumatization of telling the story again because I'm so concerned about the harm that's being perpetuated. So my lawyers said, okay, um, we'll negotiate the terms. We told Fenwick's party that I would do it and they ghosted us for two months. And my lawyers said, you know what? It's very possible that they're um, conducting the investigation without interviewing you. Maybe it's too intimidating to them that you have lawyers present and they won't be able to bully you as much. And so I closed things out with my lawyers after two months of waiting to hear back. And every time I got a phone call from my lawyer, every time I got an email, I freaked out. My body was full of genuine panic. And I spent weekends crying, dreading the anticipation of when Monday would come around and I think we'd hear back from Fenwick's party and I'd have to go in and do the interview, which I was willing to do. And we just never heard back for two months. until last week they said okay we're ready and I just know I can't I'm not willing to anymore I have to protect myself I don't think it's going to do anything my lawyers don't think it's going to do anything I reported it to the police there's official documentation of that I informed the school I have a paper trail with so many people about this. I'm not willing to do that. So this is my last attempt. And what I want to end by saying is that when I reported this to the Oak Park Police Department, they handled this with immense sensitivity and kindness to me. And if anyone needs advice, or assistance or emotional support in reporting something like this in any way, please reach out to me. I'm beyond happy to share my experience with you, give you advice, anything I can do. So that's my story and I have to tell it because that's the moral standard that I hold myself to and that I hold my community to.